In this video, we'll discuss SDT's Job and Collection Manager, SDT Terminology, Job Explorer, and Installation Settings. After installing and you open Civil 3D, you'll find the standardized data tool ribbon tab. On this tab, it has all the buttons and controls you need to access all the commands for a standardized data tool. We'll start with the Collection and Job Manager. Upon launching the Job and Collection Manager, these two buttons launch the same dialog, just different tabs. You can launch directly into it. We, STT uses um, collections and jobs. Collections store or are sort of a folder for your jobs. So if you wanted to group your jobs as in a client uh, specific jobs or a type of job such as roadway as you see here, I could group all my roadway jobs together in this category or, or, or in this collection. Um, it just makes it for easier managing of all of your jobs. Now you do always have to have a default collection. There could be nothing in it, um, but if um, STT has to have some sort of collection there to locate all the job files. Collections get stored in a provided directory that we'll talk about at the end of this video. If I switch over to the jobs tab, jobs have to be created within a collection and jobs can be saved wherever the user chooses. So they can be saved in your projects um, directory with all your model files, or they can be saved um, in a centralized location for a company, um, or you know, a group of users could save them on a server somewhere. Um, it doesn't really matter where they're saved. They just need to be part of a, of a collection and everybody's reading that same collection and it'll pull all those jobs in. You can see here under jobs, we have the ability to control the name, the description, the collection, um, the job location. And then every time you create a job, you get a what's called a job standards file. We'll talk about that here in a second and a job data file. That's kind of a brief overview of Job and Collection Manager and what's in here. We'll come back to this in a second after we talk about some of these other um, items. Let's open a job standards file. Now I don't have a project open right now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the installation directory, which is under an application plugins folder for Autodesk. Typically this should install into program files x86. Within this AECC standardized data tool bundle, there's a contents folder. If we expand that, we see a Win64 and a templates folder. In the Win64, we have EXEs and DXL, or DLLs. Um, the EXEs are actually standalone apps for most of these tools up here. Um, a lot of the batch tools process using AC Core Console through an EXE. So it doesn't, it can open its own instance of AutoCAD and process a group of model files all at once. Under the templates, you'll find we have a DWG, a DWT, which these are shipped with the product and they are, they are identical. These hold the property sets that are gonna be pushed out into your model files. Um, this could be your own template with property sets in it, if you wish. The job data file is an Excel file. Let's open up that first. So this job data file comes with just an instructions tab that tells users how to modify the data in here. And you'll see more of that in later videos. But SDT will publish the um, property sets by tab with all the data of all the entities in this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will be duplicated for every job that it creates. You can add your own tabs in here if you wish that for a template, um, or you can add some of your own instructional page uh, criteria in here if you wish as well. We'll open up the DWG file. Both Again, both of these files are the same just to show that you could use a DWG or a DWT.
And once I open that file, I'll go to the style manager, which is where we find all of our property sets. Under documentation objects, you'll see under property data formats, we have a lot of different formats in here that you can set your properties to so that uh, they output within Civil 3D to these values or to these uh, data formats, I should say. And then under the property set definitions, you'll find uh, prepackaged up SDT property sets. So within here, we're providing um, some various properties that most of them are manual, but there are a lot of also automatic ones that you'll find under the AutoCAD entities. These are the supported AutoCAD entities, and we have automatic properties that apply for these objects. So if you look at the Applies to tab, it will show that it's only applying to a 3D solid here. <clears throat> if we go down to SDT objects, these are Civil 3D objects. And with for Civil 3D objects, we can't do very many automatic properties, but we can do formulas. So formulas within property sets give you the ability to use some VB code and, and output um, various aspects of the API to retrieve information about the civil 3D objects. So here we have an alignment and it's going to return the length of that alignment. The way SDT works is we have a formula property and then we have a sister property with the same name and underscore value. So SDT will populate the formula when you open a file within Civil 3D. Upon saving that file, if it is an STT file, it will save the value from the formula over to the sister property. And that sister property is actually what writes out to the job data file when we sync. You'll see more of that in later videos. This STT shared is used by a lot of the formula properties. So this is kind of critical to uh, maintain in your wherever you're using these formulas. And then we have some prepackaged property sets for classifications, which do also have a few formula properties in there as well. And then we have Kobe and IFC. And you can add any additional property sets you wish into this template or make your own template that has property sets and properties within it. Um, just keep in mind any formulas should be have the underscore formula. SDT will automatically make the underscore value to, uh, to make that sister property. So you do not have to make that, but we ship it with it just to save processing time. All right, let's talk about the Job Explorer. So Job Explorer, I've already got it docked here on the left side, but if we close this, you can relaunch this from the Job Explorer button on the ribbon, and it will remember where it was saved. And then within here, you can switch your collection, and you can view uh, that you know the jobs within that collection and the models within that job, the times that they were saved and the user that accessed them. One nice thing about here is you can actually click on the models and open up them right from Job Explorer. And if we come back into the Job Explorer and we do a refresh, you'll see that the status light here changes to orange and shows that it's locked and open. There are also uh, buttons at the top. A lot of these button controls give you access to a lot of the same controls you have here on the ribbon. And one reason why those are there is if we close out of all files, and go back to Civil 3D's start page, Job Explorer can remain open. You can refresh and see that nothing's open. And you can actually launch a lot of these tools right from here because they are standalone apps. You can actually open up drawing files as well. So we can go back into that same drawing file right from Job Explorer. All right, back to Collection Manager. Let's make a new collection just for example here. We'll call it example. We'll give it a description of example. And then we'll add a new job. 
and we're going to call this an example job. And then here's where the user would then pick the, where the job is going to save. I'm going to save it here in my uh, documents folder that SDT has given me. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And we'll click next. And here's the template that it's pulling from the template installation folder currently. And the job data file template. And then here we can actually copy and paste in a path here. So I have some jobs already. So if I just copy this path, I can paste it in and all my, it's going to look recursively through all folders and give you the ability to access any job. It shows you ones that might be open already. Um, or you can use the selection and do it this way, whichever you prefer. So I want to use the sample project. So here's my files from that sample project. You can click the plus sign and add them in one by one, or you can shift highlight and add them over. I had one already added, so it won't let me do that. And then we hit finish and close. <clears throat> now when we see our, our collection here, shows that it has not yet been saved, shows that the job has not yet been saved. We can actually switch tabs over to the jobs tab and expand that job. And we can see the model files are in there. And then we can also see that it hasn't fully been saved. So there's no job standards file or job data file yet. When we click apply, SDT will start running. And what it's doing is using AC core console on the back end. And it's opening every one of these files and adding DWG props to these files to assign them to that job. <clears throat> so this may take a few minutes to run, but SDT will return and tell you when it's done. All right, so changes have been saved. And so now we know those jobs or those models have been added. If we close and we go to Job Explorer, uh, Job Explorer, it's telling you that Job Explorer is already open. It's docked somewhere. If for whatever reason, tool palettes sometimes get placed weird locations or shrunk down, you can always reset the palette. If you reset it, it'll go back and, and reload itself up and um, forget its previous positions for you. <clears throat> so we'll go example. We've got example job. Here's our models. If I click on one of these and open it up, and we run DWG props. Once Civil 3D kicks in here. And we go to the custom tab, you'll see that there's STT job name, job ID, and model ID. So these are, these are what um, STT are using to identify this drawing with um, the job. So if those aren't kept, it's going to forget that that file belongs to that. So we'll talk more about using these files in future videos, but that's essentially how this works. Back to Job and Collection Manager. We have a few things that we can do now within Collection Manager now that we have some data. So I'm looking for a specific job named example, so I can actually search all of SAT and it will show me all the results that show up as example. So we have this first collection and a job within that collection, all named example. And then it shows the default collection and another job under it that's called STT example, because that's the three that it found. Um, if you want to turn off filtering, you can either click here or here. Um, and then do you want to search in collections and jobs or the collections only? Um, you have control over all of that. Next, if you go to the filter icon, you can search by status lights to figure out, okay, what things are, maybe have issues or whatever, um, because the status lights are used all throughout STT. You'll see these green, orange, yellows um, show over here. Again, if you hold over them, it'll tell you what's, what's going on with it. So you can search by that. You can search by any, pretty much any of these columns to help filter data down. 
because um, this list can get lengthy once you start getting a lot of projects in here. Again, you have the same controls from the job side and do you wanna search both jobs and models here? So if you're searching for a specific model file, you can do that. So we could say utility and every one of these has a utility model file within it. So then we can see you know, what's going on in here. And if I wanna also filter that down further, I could do so and look for just the ones that are used. So there is a filter at the job level and there's filter at the model level within each job. All right, so that's uh, kind of an overview of how SDT works and job and collection manager is your primary setup for every collection and job and assigning your models to those objects. From here, you're able to start using SDT once they're assigned to a job. Now, installation, let's go back and talk about installation. We saw the UI and how all that works. We kind of talked about where things install. So the install directory again is the Autodesk application plugins folder. Um, you've got everything in here. There is a documents folder that also gets generated under your, each user's documents. Um, so under each user documents is where the initial um, SDT settings file will run from. There's nothing in the registry. It just uses this XML here. Uh, by default, it is going to store collections in here. So your default collection is gonna be here. Any collections the user makes are gonna be in here. Uh, by default, it's going to put jobs in here as well. So I would recommend um, either putting these with your projects as you create jobs. Uh, that's probably the best location to put them for backups and whatnot. There is a logs folder in here to identify any issues that might be happening in SDT. Uh, they will be logged in there for a, a daily log. As far as how to control users uh, and where their collections are made. You can do that by using netload and we'll browse to the installation directory in the Win64 folder. There's an AECC SDT Civil 3D Management DLL. If you netload that and then type in SDT Management Create INI file, the INI file will then be created in your documents folder so if we look, we have an INI file. If STT finds this INI file, it will force STT to use these settings. So you could push this out to users into this directory and control where all the collection files get stored for you know, a group of users, if you will, and where the templates are used. All right, well, that is SDT overview in a nutshell of how it all works, the settings, the installation, some of the terminology, and we'll discuss more about how to utilize the SDT tools in future videos.